Hey, it's Diane here and welcome to Deco Easy. Welcome to a new edition of the Farmhouse High End for Cheap. The first item that I want to remake myself is this distressed bend wood plant stand from the Hobby Lobby. The original price was $20 and it's now reduced to $10 because of, uh, yeah, spring sale. Well, anyway, the item is out of stock, so yeah. I think I can make something like this. This is the back, by the way. Uh, myself, well, yeah, let's go and try it out. Hey, it's Diane here. Are you ready for a new DIY in the farmhouse style? Well, I have, as you can see, quite a bunch of paint stir sticks. Uh, these are packages with small sticks and larger ones. And I want to make some sort of stool out of it. I also have uh, not that much here, straight ones. The other ones are all shaped like this here, with a small handle with a grip. Um, and I want to, yeah, as I said, make a farmhouse stool out of it where you can put a small plant on. Let's start crafting. First, I want to sew these things into the right measurement. Okay, this will be my some sort of blueprint. It looks a bit weird when you see this. Um, I'm going to leave the flat ones in the original size, at least these two. These ones are all gonna chop down here by the edge where it gets smaller. I'll leave the tiny ones up here. This will be the C. These two, I'll glue them together. Let it come from out of here. And then this one, I'm going to saw here. And then what stays left, I'm going to do the same size. So that will be the footstools here and there. So the C comes in here and then one here and one there. And I think that will do the trick. So I now go outside with a saw uh, and try to make them all in the same size. And then I will be back to you with how it looks. Oh yeah, before you start, don't forget to remove these stickers. I once forgot that and noticed it when my DIY was ready and I, yeah, I had to do a lot of effort to take it off. Um, yeah, these won't come off that easy. Sometimes they really split, split up to small pieces. Now this one goes pretty okay. Some small parts left here and there. What? clean as it can be. Let's start using the saw. I'll be using the figure so I'll do it outside just to get rid of the mess easier. Um, yeah, really it just took me 15 minutes to place this saw in this thing. Something was wrong with these bolts here so now it is fixed and I can easily use it. Um, let's do it and I will show you how it looks after the sewing is done. Okay, it is gluing time. I have here and here and here the uh, stir sticks that I need for, need for the stool. Bad English talking day today. Here I have some scraps which may come of use. Uh, for example, this will be the seat, seat part of the stool. And I can attach some extra wood stir sticks here to, you know, make it more safe and secure out there. So that's why I kept them and not threw them away. Uh, and by the way, they're also really cute baby to put something underneath because they just look like little uh, how do you call that? Pause. That is probably not the right word uh, under your projects. So, you know, don't throw them away is my advice. You can always use them later. Okay, I have this new, you know, crafting uh, mat underneath my stuff. And the easy thing is that it comes with measurements. So I perfectly align the whole uh, thing together before I start applying Mod Podge because I don't have wood glue. Mod Podge also works excellent for gluing wood together. So just pour some Mod Podge with a brush over the parts where you need to glue. Yes, I think that this is it. Oh, here's some little bit more. We really want to have a lot of Mod Podge to soak the whole thing up. Now, carefully align here. Oh, this one needs to go a little bit up. 
Head straight. Okay, it is now. Here we go. Now I have to press it together, but do it carefully. Just hold it for several seconds, and then I'm going to put something heavy upon it. I think a glass case stand or something. Uh, and then I start gluing the seat part of the stool. Okay, I put the parts for the seat in the right place. They're not exactly the same size, but to be honest, I don't mind that. Now I'm starting to use these scrap pieces of wood. Um, and I'm going to put some mud podge upon it. Just use a lot because you're going to glue some heavy stuff. I think this is okay. Nah, no, just put it over in there randomly. I think here is okay. Just do whatever you want to. Better hold this thing to the side. And here's some more. Just divide it on the parts where you want to glue. Let's see here again. Now on to the front part. And then let's see if there is any space Ooh, almost up on the table. Any space left to put some more wood. I think four is enough for this job. Here is nice. Don't forget to press it. Here's some more. Now I'm going to put one still in the center. And then I think it is secure enough to hold, you know, heavier decoration parts. Something like this. Okay. Now I have to wait until everything is dry, so I'm going to, yeah, take some lunch, and I'll be back after that. I think one hour, maybe longer, is okay. See you soon. Okay, the largest parts are glued. This is one part, and I have, you know, the plateau. This is the back, and this one is really turned out cute. I forgot to sew these four extra, uh, um sticks because I also need to put here some upon the side and one on the back and one on the front of the sitting area to hide those you know pieces of wood here underneath so first I'm going to glue I think this together here yeah putting this together and I'm gluing this upon it for this job here, I'll be using a Mod Podge, or not Mod Podge, the uh, glue gun. This is the heaviest part. And then I can put some part here. Or maybe this was just enough. I have no idea. And then these two is here to the side. So I'm going to glue these three first, here, here, and here. Then the um, glue gun comes in. So I'll be back soon when everything is ready. There it is. The glue part is done. This is the side. Well, as you can see, it's not completely perfect here. But to be honest, I don't mind because, yeah, it is farmhouse after all. Nothing is perfect as in a glam style, for example. 
Okay, um, time to paint the whole thing, I guess. I think I start off with a layer of grey, then I'm going to add a little bit of white chalk paint and top it off with some V-Wax to make it a little bit more brown. Okay, first we start off with this grey chalk paint from Action. Just pour the paint in the cup and then I'll start painting it with the brush. Grey will be my base color for this. And I had this paint for quite a long time. And it works good on all kinds of materials. Now I think I'll just start painting the bottom parts of the chair. Um, what is smart? I think putting it over like this is an idea. Oh, there we go with the first part of paint. Now just start painting here. And then I work my way up to the top of the chair. Until everything is covered in the gray paint. Now also the color difference between the two straight sticks and the ones with the grit disappeared. And that is a good thing. Just hold it there while I'm painting this. These are actually the hardest things to paint. Like so. Now do the other one. And then the back part, or the bottom part, actually is done. There you go. I think as I'm seeing it right now, the one layer is enough. But we'll see how it turns out. Maybe two are necessary. I don't know that yet. Don't forget to do the sides as well. Well, this is going to be such a fun project. And I really like this. Yeah, well, Jew. It isn't inspiration to take a look at those websites your own farmhouse decor. Well, the first paint job is done and I'm going to let it dry. Let's see, what is the drying time? Is that written upon there? Nope. Well, now we just wait an hour and see how it goes after one hour, if we're ready to put chalk paint upon it or not. So, let's wait and drink a cup of tea. It is time to start distressing, and therefore I have an old towel uh, and a used brush. And I'm using this old white chalk paint, also from Action. What I'm going to do is set myself up, oh, turn the camera over, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. Yes. Okay, I hope you can still see what I am doing. Well, let's do it like this. Carefully open up the can. Uh, put that thing here in the front. I always find this paint so so nice to smell. Okay, now take a little bit, wipe it off on the inside of the can so you can get rid of the excess paint. And then I'm just dabbing the brush a little bit into the towel. Let's loosen it up a little bit. It is actually a bit too new for that, so I have to make it a little bit rougher and used. Okay. Now the hair of the brush is better. And I think I just start off by distressing here the sides. So you get that really nice and warm look. Oh. And repeat all those steps completely over the parts where you want to distress here, there. And the edges here. A little bit more here upon the sides. Oh, already need new paint. Here a little bit on the sides. 
some extra here. Just do whatever you like, as long as you're giving it a distressed look. And the rest is totally up to you, what you want to do with that. Okay, the distressing is done. Let me show you a little bit closer how it turned out so far. It is more vintage now. And I need to let this dry a long time because this thing uh, needs quite a time to dry completely. Um, yeah, I think it's noon right now. I have to wait until the evening until I can continue. But I don't know if I have time for that today. So maybe I'll go for the tomorrow. We'll see how it turns out. Anyway, this is really how I like it. Uh, I like the distress look. I'm not as good as distressing, but with this thing I'm really satisfied. So I'll be back soon to finish it off with some bee wax. Okay, the last step is adding some bee wax onto the bench. And I'm just going to apply that with a brush. Protect your workspace because this stuff, you can't get it out of your table or your other furniture anymore. Just use a little, little bit. There's the start at the bottom because I still have to do that again. Okay, now the most it came off. So now you can start just, you see, brushing it a little bit here and there. So it gets a little bit more brown. Especially here at the top. That is a good part. Some here. Just do it roughly as you like it. You don't need that much. Just add as much as you want to. And then you're done with this project. And this is how the stool looks. You can put actually all kind of decor upon it, but I think it is cute to just add a little plant here or maybe in the center. So it is usable to use outdoors and I really adore this look. I also like that the white uh, chalk paint and the brown bee wax add a little bit of the distressed look to it. So yeah, I think this jube looks pretty cool. We are here on Etsy and I found this cute birdhouse here. Uh, this color combination will be my inspiration. Uh, I don't think I will add the same text to it. And I have a little bit different shape birdhouse, but I surely like this color combination. And I also like the text nest upon it. So yeah, let's see how this idea turns out. You can also use this cute stool to put other items on. For example, this really cute birdhouse. Well, it is a bit boring now. I bought this one from the shop called Action here in the Netherlands. I think it was two or three euros, something like that. I, I want to remake it into some farmhouse uh, birdhouse. And for that, I found some inspiration online. So yeah, I'm going to try to do a remake of the following item. Okay, what we need for restyling the birdhouse is some chalk paint. This is green and I also have white paint. Uh, this is acrylic paint, uh, but I want to go over it with chalk paint to give it a really nice smooth finish. So it has the same finish as this chalk paint. I want the roof to be green and the rest I want that to be white. So yeah, I'm going to start painting now and I'll show you uh, how it looks like when the whole thing is white. And if you're curious about the chalk paint I'm using, it's the same one again. So first the acrylic paint then finish it off with this chalk paint and then I'll be painting the roof with this green chalk paint as well. The birdhouse is now completely white. I also did the roof so I have a really nice base to uh, put on the green chalk paint there. So that's what I'm going to do next. Paint the roof.
Okay, the paint is dry. Doesn't the colors look cute together? I think it's a really nice farmhouse style. The only thing I want to do right now is write the word nest here. Uh, and I want to do that in the style of Rain Dunn. For example, I have smaller bird houses made a while ago. And they have the Rain Dunn uh, uh, letters. And yeah, I just, I'm just going to peek on a Rain Dunn image where it says nest. And I'm going to take a small pencil, draw the word, and then uh, write it over with a permanent marker. I will show you how it looks like. Here you see the word nest written. Now I'll take a permanent marker, a black one, and just write over it. I'll be using this gloss marker because this is the one with the finest tip that I have. Now start carefully upon this side. I always find this a scary thing to do. My hand is steady enough for this. It looks cute so far. And at some points, the wooden surface is quite rough. But this looks great so far. I'm going to do the S. That is the hardest because there is the roughest part of the whole house. Other underneath it is smooth, but not up on the bottom, up on the top. Last one, the T is easy for me. Turn it upside down because then my hand can rest upon the house. There we have it! The nest! Oh, look how cute! Just with a little bit of greenery, you can make something really cute and for yourself. Let us know what you think of these DIYs. And if you like them, of course, we really care about your opinion. Show us what you think. So if you're new to the farmhouse high end for cheap, then let me explain to you what it is. Each edition is hosted by us, Jenny and I from Deco Easy, and uh, uh, also by Kiki from Kiki DIYs. And each edition, we also have two co-hosts, which are our guests actually, which are hosting with us. Uh, you'll find all the channels from Kiki, us, and also from the hosts in the description box here below. There you also find the playlist to see what other creators made. And yeah, to make a thing, that is actually what it's all about. You go to a random website and uh, pick something which you like in a farmhouse style. It can be anything, also seasonal farmhouse, that is totally up to you. And what you're going to do, you're going to recreate everything, but for a whole less money than actually the original price is. So yeah, that is actually the purpose. Here you see, I got an old book from my daughter. My daughter was uh, studying uh, on the university here in the Netherlands, and of course, she did got her master degree, so she didn't, uh, she doesn't have to use this book anymore. But uh, all the books were gone. But this book had a hard cover, and I thought maybe I can uh, turn it into a little bit of a farmhouse style uh, book because I am loving books in my decor. But of course, not this way. So I'm going to turn it around first. I'm going to give it a little bit of a black coat. For this I am going to use the school board paint and of course I'm first I'm going to do only the top from the first side so because I really love to take a little bit more time to um, paint it uh, in nicely than to do it a little bit fast so I am going to paint the uh, top of the of this book and then I will do the back side. And then I will be back with you how he's looking like when he's totally black. 
So you see already how my book is looking right now and I am really loving the black color but what I totally did forget to tell you earlier is that of course I have an inspiration piece. I always uh, uh, look them up online, the books and you see for three books you all also pay $30. There's a lot of money for three little books and you can make them your own. So if you have books laying around in your home, from your parents' home, from your children, just use them with a little bit of a hard cover. Just uh, make your own books and you always make them uh, more unique than, than you buy them. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, take some furniture racks and you see here, this is uh, the pages of our books. I want to uh, do them in a, a wax color. So I'm going to make this in the brown color so it's fitting a little bit more with the farmhouse book. So I'm going to do that first. So it's, like I said it's so easy. I just do it a little bit in front of you. I don't do the whole book because or else it will take much too long for you. But just work your way a little bit this way and just make it in the color you like. I like a little bit of the darker brown, but if you like a, uh, uh, another color, it's also fine. You can do it in the blue color, in the uh, black color, if you like black pages, in the gold color, you can do anything you like. But I do it in the brown color. But I'll show you in a moment when it's totally finished. So you see already, this is how the sides turned out. And I am really happy with it. So what we're going to do right now is just uh, before we're going to do the stress the sides of our book because it's a very easy and quick DIY I take you now along to my uh, computer and I'm in making in my program magic I will make uh, a picture for the top and on the back the back is very easy because there's most of the time there's nothing on it so but for the top we are making a little uh, farmhouse display so it fits a little bit better on the, in my decor so I hope you come along with me So here you see already what we just made uh, in my magic and you see here always measure out what you need. I thought it's a big book. <laughs> this measurement of the whole paper is <laughs> totally fine but it isn't. <laughs> you see here he is much too big so I could have <laughs> gone back again and I did have to make a couple of them but then a little bit smaller. <laughs> So and that one I have nothing. So don't do the make the same mistake like me. Just first measure out what you need, and then of course <laughs> we can uh, mud podge it on top of our book. So I will cut it out, and I will mud podge this on top of it. So you see here I did uh, cut it out, and I am going to mud podge it on top of it. But I want to have it just at the right place. So I'm going to try something new. Probably it totally will fail. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to try because I want to be sure that my uh, picture is uh, on the right spot so I'm going to and I don't want to have my whole book under the mud patch so I'm first I'm going to do a little uh, piece of my picture so I am sure when I am doing the rest it will stay uh, at the right place so I'm going to do this line and probably this will feel like I said <laughs> <laughs> but we will see so I have to get it first this piece on top of it and then I'm going to do the rest so I will do the rest and then I show you how if it fills or not <laughs> so you see here how he it turned out I can tell you don't try it <laughs> just don't try don't try it because uh, at least no, for me it didn't work. Um, the back side I did totally mud parts it and then uh, did my picture on top of it. But I am always in war with my, <laughs> my mud parts. What way I try it doesn't matter. I can do, uh, I get a lot of beautiful tips to uh, do the mud parts on top of it. But with me over <laughs> one way or another way it will always be <laughs> a disaster. So I am 
at least I'm happy how it's uh, looking like right now but it took me a lot of work to get it this way so what you see here already it looks uh, uh, so nice like an old uh, book and of course it is not old again because we have to distress it I let this dry for a little moment and then we are going to distress uh, the sides and the big so you see already a little bit of blue from the black is came off so I am going to distress it with the gray color and a little bit of the brown color so I will do that in a moment and then our book is already finished so it's already dried up for a little bit what I'm going to do I just take a little bit of uh, gray paint and just do it on a piece of kitchen towel and I'm just going to dab a little bit of the my brush into it and of course a lot of you already know how to distress so um, I'm not telling you how to do it or which way to do it, just it's an example how you can do it. This is the way I'm doing it, but if you have a better way, it's totally fine too, because everyone is... And I'm just going around the edges first, always around the sides. So I'm going to take this whole uh, piece in the grey color first, and of course also the back side, and then we're going to take the brown, but every time just take... A little bit because if you get one once you get it on top of it it's very hard to get it off a school board paint so just go around the edges and I'm going to do everything but I won't do will do that out of camera or else you will be like I always say will be very bored so you see a little bit how he turned out this is the back side and of course I distressed also a little bit the picture because if you leave the picture alone it will be very strange if your picture is totally uh, fine and the rest is all distressed and old so I'm letting this dry for a little bit right now and then I show you the end result and here do you see the end result of our uh, DIY from an old school book and you see it is turned out so nice so go around in your home just find some old books from school from uh, your children it doesn't matter just find some books throw some paint on it and do a picture on it and distress it and you will see you have your own unique farmhouse book so I hope you just got a little bit inspiration of it and just find your own and make your own so, but I am really happy how mine turned out. So that was it for today. And Jenny and I hope you had fun watching. If you did, don't forget to give the video a big like. Uh, don't forget as well to check out the other creators made. You will find a link to the other videos in the playlist here in the description box. Also, I want to thank Kiki uh, for yeah being here with us today, doing this together. And I want to thank, of course, our guests. Next episode, uh, we have some new guests for you. So stay tuned. And for now, I wish you a very nice day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, everyone.